I want to explain to you guys what I'm feeling before I get into the story. So I am still very shocked. I am nervous. Right? It's one of those stories where you're like, I've seen it on TV. I didn't actually think that it happened that way. I'm, I'm using the restroom and I hear like somebody like hitting the door in such a, this is not happening, plus my gut coming in a few times. I was in such shock. What's up guys? I'm Stephanie. Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Feelings. Y'all, I have a story for you guys and I had like a idea as to, I feel like I'm always going to say this, I had an idea as to what my podcast episode would be and then situations happen and I'm like, no, we need to talk about this. I'm going to explain to you the situation, but I'm going to explain to you my feelings first because obviously this is a feelings podcast and I want to explain to you guys what I'm feeling before I get into the story. So I am still very shocked. I am nervous. Mm, I wouldn't say nervous. Not nervous to st share the story, but just nervous like in the sense of like any activities with like being in an area that I don't know, right? So as if you follow me on social media, um, I was in Atlanta recently and my wife and I had an amazing time. <laughs> First of all, um, we had a blast. It was super duper fun. Um, uh, if you are a Vampire Diaries fan, we went to Covington. Um, also the originals and uh, legacies. All those shows were filmed in Covington, Georgia. And um, if you've never watched Vampire Diaries or Legacies or any of those other shows, it's a vampire show. It's fantastic. Go check it out. But um, they're all filmed in Covington and majority of it is filmed in Covington, um, Georgia. And they have museums for it. They have everything. And we had all the fun. So we are heading back, right? And these, this story that I'm going to tell you it's one of those stories where you're like, I've seen it on TV. I didn't actually think that it happened that way. You know, usually I think it's just like one of those like Dateline or like, um, you know, one of those true crime things where you, they make it a little bit more exaggerated. So <laughs> we're headed back from Atlanta. Um, we left Covington around like five. So it's six hours from Atlanta to where we live. Um, and it's like an hour and a half uh, to the end of our ride. And both Steph and I have to use a restroom. We also have our fur child with us. We have Sky with us. And um, we have to put gas in the car. So we're like, let's make a pit stop for everyone. So everyone can use the restroom. Um, you know, we can get gas in the car. Sky can go to the restroom and we're, we'll get back for the last hour and a half and we'll be home, right? So we put gas. I take her out to go use the restroom um, and I'm like, all right, cool. So we're going to get back in the car, drive, because, you know, you know where the ga gas pumps are, you have to drive up to actually go into the gas station to, you know, go use the restroom. So um, we get Sky back in the, in the car, Steph finishes pumping, and we drive forward into the gas station area, um, the actual store. So um, I'm not paying attention at all. Um, Steph goes and uses the restroom. She comes back. When I get out of the car, and you know what? I was gonna describe what I'm wearing, but honestly, it makes no matter what the heck I'm wearing because this shouldn't have happened. I'm gonna start there. It shouldn't have happened. So, um, I get out of the car, and there's three guys directly in front of me. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, there's guys, you know, if anything, they're gonna look, and I can just continue with my life, right? So, I get out of the car. I walk in front of them. I pass two of them on the third guy. He turns around and he follows me. I, and at this point, my gut is screaming at me. Just go back to the car, go back to the car. My bladder is screaming at me and going, no, 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 just, we need to go to the restroom. <laughs> my brain is trying to like compute all these things at one time. So 
I finally open the door into the gas station and I walk. I still notice that he's directly behind me because now I'm paying attention to footsteps and looking at the corner of my eye. So he's walking and I'm walking and I don't know where I picked this up from. If, if you know, please let me know. But I started going in and out of um, aisles. Cause I'm like, I want to see how fa far he's going. Like I want to see where he's going. So I'm going in and out of aisles in the, in this same time, Steph is watching through the car and she's like, why are, are like, why am I going in and out of aisles? Right? So at one point I lose the guy and this bathroom y'all <laughs> is literally the men's restroom and the women's restroom are right next to each other. It's a one stall bathroom, but the handle, the handle is like a regular handle to open the door, but to close the door is just the lock. So I, I have my nails at the time. These are my actual nails. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I had longer nails. So I'm like grasping onto this lock, shutting it and locking it. I don't know what told me to have my phone because sometimes I'll leave my phone in the car um, just because I'm like, I don't need it. And if I drop it in the toilet because I'm infamous for dropping my phone, um, if I drop it in the toilet, I'm screwed. Right. But I took my phone this time. Thank God. So I'm trying to figure out everything before I even go use the restroom. I'm trying to like catch my breath. I'm trying to like figure out what just happened. Right. So I'm like, all right, well, I don't have time to do all these things. Let me go use the restroom so I can get out of here. In the second that I actually start using the restroom, I hear three guys outside of the stall. Now I'm like a hundred percent sure um, that they're Hispanic because I can, they're speaking perfectly good Spanish. So I'm like, I'm listening. I'm trying to pick up any, if he's, if they're saying anything of, of like, oh, we're about to take her something, right? All I can think about was, please God, don't let this be how I go out. And I'm, I'm laughing because it's still, I can feel the anxiety just going up and down my system. I'm still not over it. And it's been, I've already had a therapy session in between this. So that tells you how long it's been, but I really wanted to share the story. So I'm, I'm using the restroom and I hear like somebody like hitting the door. And I also, and it's not my, my restroom door, but it's the men's restroom door. And they're like kicking, laughing, all these things, hitting the door. And I'm freaking out. Cause I'm like, they're right there. Again, this door only, it opens out and it closes in. So I don't have, and it, it like, there's a wall and the door opens. So I'm like, I'm right next to the wall. If these people try to come in, like I'm screwed. Like if these guys try to come in, they're either going to kill me or rape me. While this is all happening, Steph calls me and I put her on speaker and I'm like, Hey, she's like, Hey, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I just have to use the restroom. Can you do me a favor? Can you take the hand sanitizer out? Because I'm just going to use the restroom and get out of here. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This whole time Steph is super calm. Like when I tell you calmer than calm, like I couldn't freak out on the phone with her because she was so calm. So, She's like, okay. I'm like, Hey, can you stay on the phone with me while I, you know, go, like finish what I'm doing while I, you know, until I get to you basically. She's like, yeah, yeah, no problem. So I'm talking to her and the call drops because my phone connected to the car. And so quickly, as I noticed that I, in me trying to call her back, she calls me. So I, I pick up and she goes, what was that noise? And I was like, Oh no, no, no. The, the phone connected to the car. Um, and she's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I just really want to get out of here. The whole time I'm like, please stay on the phone. She's like, no, I, I got you, I got you. In this time frame, guys, I swear to you not, there was no noise. The guys had left, no noise whatsoever. So at this point, I'm still freaking out. I'm like, <laughs> they could just be quiet on the other side of the door. Again, the door, there's a wall here. The door opens outwards like this, me in a bathroom. That's all I was thinking, right? I take the phone, I hold on to the phone. I didn't have my purse, I just had my phone. And when I tell you I have never slung a door open fast and slow all at the same time, I wanted to make sure like if I slung the door and somebody was next to it, it would hit them straight in the face. And then, but I did it slow enough so I could kind of have a moment to notice like if there is somebody that I did miss the door with, I could just come back and lock it. I, couldn't, I can't even tell you the breakdown if 
if I wanted to. So I open the door, see that nobody's there. And when I tell you, I just full blown, just hightail it straight out of there. I don't think I've ever walked fast enough, um, faster than that moment. Um, so I'm, I'm r like basically running out of this place and I see Steph standing outside. I'm standing, or I'm, I'm watching her stand outside, and I'm like, oh my God, something something more is happening. Like, this can't just be the end of the story, right? So, uh, she's standing outside, and the three guys are outside, too. And I'm like, what Like, what could happen? So, she, she, she asked me if I'm okay. I'm like, yes. She puts me in the car. And, like, at that point, like, it, it kind of blurred out, because I think I was trying to, like, catch my breath. Steph, and I'm going to be very honest with you guys, um, we both have our concealed weapons license. So whenever we travel, if we're traveling by car, we're two women. Unfortunately, in this day and age, you have to carry some sort of weapon to make sure that you're okay. Whether that's mace, whether that's a, I don't know, a, a, a stick, a something to defend yourself with. You have to do that. If you don't have one, get one. Just based on this story. So she puts me in the car and she has her weapon on her. There's one guy that's like, basically like kind of figuring out like don't mess with us kind of thing and he like walks on the other side of his car so our car was parked Steph had to walk in front of the car in order to get to her side of the uh, to the her door the guy that was following me was walking right in front of her to get to his car which was to the left of us that man looked straight into the car and looked straight to like literally looked me in the eyes I've never been so afraid a day in my life and for me, I've never had this kind of situation before. And I thank God that I wasn't by myself. I had Steph, um, we were armed. And after that, after the guy passed, Steph got in the car, we locked the car doors and slowly drove out because Steph was like, well, I don't want them following us. So I apologize guys, <laughs> another, another party downtown was such a serious story. So with everything that happened I'm, I'm getting so hot thinking about it with everything that happened i was so thankful for steph i was so thankful for the fact that we were armed but it made me think guys what if it was just me even like not even just me like what if it was just a girl that was driving home had to use a restroom and these guys took her because again why were they in front of the bathroom like nobody was there Nobody was using the restroom. I could hear the door moving. I could hear them slapping. Why? Why was it necessary for somebody to be outside of a restroom that I was using and think that it was okay? Why was it okay for you to follow me when I'm just simply trying to go use a restroom? Why wasn't the person that worked the gas station paying attention to this? Like there were so many things that I'm like, all these things could have gone wrong if I wasn't there with another person. If I wasn't there with another armed person, like God forbid, Steph and I were not armed. We were just like, ah, like, you know, and this is at night too. I, you know, I didn't, I'm sorry that I didn't add that in, but you know, it's five from five to the, to an hour before I draw our getting home. I think we got home like 10 or 11. Like what if we were like, you know, like, touristy and we're like oh we'll just take our time you know like I've seen people at like rest stops where they open their car doors and just chill out and I'm like what if we did that what if we thought it was okay to do all these things and one of us would have gotten taken I should have listened to my gut first of all and the moment I felt that I should have just because when he followed me like when he turned around right by, when I tell you like I want to use a good example, but I'm just going to use my hands. So he was standing and uh, I'm using my right arm for people who are just listening on the podcast um, or just listening with their headphones. So my right hand is directly in front of me. My left hand is like a little bit right behind my right hand. And when I tell you, we were like, if I stopped, he would have ran right into me. He had turned so fast behind me that when I tell you, like, like I said, I could have literally like... <laughs> I could have farted and this man would have smelled it like instantly. That's how close he was. Like he was so close that it was just, it was ridiculous. It was so ridiculous as to why he was this close, why he felt comfortable enough doing that. And why didn't I listen to my gut? Like why didn't I think this is already weird. Let me just turn the heck back around. Why don't I just turn around 
and head back to my car. I'll use the restroom at the next rest stop. Also, why do these things happen? Why, why is this such a thing now? Because that was giving me sex trafficker vibes all the way, all the way. Like I'm a human being and I just need to use the restroom and I'm being followed. I'm being followed. And that's why I didn't even start with explaining my outfit because that means nothing. That means, and the reason why I'm so stuck on the fact of not describing my outfit is because a lot of people when they talk about being sexually assaulted or anything that has to be with se has to be with sexual abuse, they're like, oh, well, you were wearing this, so what did you expect? No. I don't care if you're wearing a toothpick. No one should have the right to come behind you, to touch you, to, to do anything to you without your consent. This man was too close and he followed me and he thought, that's fine. God forbid he would have gotten in there and raped me. That would have been a whole nother situation. And that is what's going through my mind. That is what's constantly going the next time I go to use the restroom. My wife and I had to stop and put gas in the car today to come here and I freaked out. I legit cried just looking at the gas station. It's not even the same gas station. It's just the gas station for me that now is like trippy. Now I'm like, can I go use the restroom by myself? Can I go anywhere and use the restroom by myself and think somebody's not gonna just like come behind me? And it's different than like, I've gone, I've, um, when I was in Atlanta, I went to a museum with my friend and the, uh, the lock on the, on the door didn't lock. I didn't even know that the bathroom didn't lock. So the bathroom didn't lock. And I'm like, I, I had no idea, but somebody walked in Well, I'm fully using the restroom. That's not the same thing. That feeling is not the same feeling. The feeling of being followed to the bathroom. That is a whole nother, like, I don't even want to describe it. I don't even want you to go through it. If that is one thing in this life that I don't wish upon any person, I don't wish it on my worst enemy, I don't wish you to have any experience like that. I hope you go through the rest of your life not feeling that way because it is awful. It is so awful. I, I wanted to talk about this, this episode because I had wrote down in my notes that I wanted to talk about going with your gut and trusting with yourself and trusting you for knowing you the best. But damn it when I tell you this couldn't have been a better example. I hate the fact that I went through this example to be able to tell you guys this, but when I tell you, I really wish I would have gone with my gut and felt, as soon as I felt that man walk right behind me, I was screaming, go back to the car, go back to the car, go back to the car, but I really had to use the restroom. Like, it's either my bladder self-destructing or my well-being. <laughs> I really, I really wish I would have trusted my gut. And there's nothing wrong with my gut. I usually have a pretty good, pretty good gut that tells me which, what to do and what not to do. But man, I really wish I would have followed my gut in that moment and not thought, well, like I have to use the restroom. Like, I think I was so, you know when you're like in a situation, you're there, but you're not there. You're like, this can't be possibly happening. Like, this is not something that's happening right now. You're lying to me when I think this is happening. Like I just like shake me out of this dream. It, it can't be possible. I was in such a, this is not happening. Plus my gut coming in a few times. I was in such shock. And then like when we left and we drove away, I boo, like I'm telling you like boo hoo cried. And it wasn't even because of like anger. It was pure like, I'm still scared about this. I'm still scared that this happened to me. And I kept telling Steph, I was like, I pray that no other woman goes there by themselves. I really hope and I pray to God that no other person came came to that at that gas station that night that could possibly have been taken. Because you just you never know. Like, if you are and this goes for men and women, if you are somewhere and you do not feel safe, leave because let me tell you something that little feeling that little that little sensation that you have going on 99% of the time it's so on point that you have you have no idea you have no idea how on point your gut is unless you follow it if you have a feeling if you have the most 
even if it's the slightest one, like sometimes like Steph will go somewhere and it's not even like, oh, you went without me, so this is why I feel this way. No, sometimes I have the worst feelings. And I don't tell her because I'm like, I don't want that to go into your head and then something does happen. But I always, I not always, but I get those feelings and I'm like, fuck, I don't like having those feelings. Sometimes I'll have it, I've had those, <laughs> I was in high school and a friend of, I wouldn't even say a friend, it was a group of girls we all went and we stayed, um, was it South Beach? I wanna say South Beach. We stayed at a hotel. And at that point, I had known a guy that was out of high school, like he graduated, he had a job, he had a car, all these things, right? And I made the very terrible mistake. And I this is the part where I knew I was wrong. So I made the mistake of saying that and the girls were like, oh, invite him so he could drive us to the mall. Of course. I'm the cool kid. I'm the one that has the guy that likes her that's out of high school that, you know, has a car. So I'm like, yeah, totally. I'm, I'm going to do this. I invite this guy. He invites his friend. So now we're all chilling, everything like that. Wonderful. We leave the mall to go back to the house to, or back to the hotel to get dressed so that way we can go out that night. So we go out and of course, alcohol and people, you never know how people are going to react. Well, long story short, we get back to the hotel room after everyone was out and this guy punches his whole arm through a glass window. He decided to bleed from our hotel room all the way down the street until an ambulance picked him up because somebody called the ambulance to pick him up. I've never seen that man ever again. And I had to come out of pocket. Thank God, I don't know why my mom gave me $500 that day and was like, here, it was either five or three two i want to say two hundred dollars it was like here just in case of emergency there was an emergency this is where my gut i should have followed my gut i should have been like absolutely not we're not going i'm not inviting this person it, and everything was going wrong that's the other thing like when your gut goes along with everything going wrong it's like your gut is like telling you hey can you pay attention to those red flags that are clearly in front of you because if you're not paying attention to these red flags, if you're not following your gut, sometimes things go like extremely wrong. But then there's times where it's like you're, you're just over, like going a little crazy. I had to think about that in, in this situation with being in that gas station. I legit at one point was thinking, am I over exaggerating? Am I overthinking this? Am I thinking somebody's following me and really that's not what's happening? Don't do that. Cause you're not crazy. You haven't lost your mind. It is really what happened to you. You're not making a big deal about anything. Strike that from your, from your whole thought process because it, it, it did actually happen. You did actually have that situation. You did actually go through something crazy and you're not crazy for thinking that way. It actually did happen to you and you're not over exaggerating. Let me be very clear with you. I was trying to find fault in myself that why? Why did I have to find fault in myself in something that I didn't, I did nothing. When I tell you I did nothing, I did nothing. I didn't ask to be followed. I didn't, my outfit didn't ask to be followed. I am not a poster child for uh, um, please creepy man follow me. Like I didn't have that. So in these situations where one, you don't follow your gut, try. <laughs> try I know as hard as that is try I'm I'm trying to listen to this message as hard as you are go with your gut and two you're not over exaggerating you're not over exaggerating if you're in a situation where something went wrong and something affected you you are not in the wrong you didn't ask for it because let me be clear I'm no longer talking about my situation I'm talking about things that where it could have gone wrong because God forbid if I would have been raped in that situation, I was not I was not in the wrong for that. I did not bring that upon myself. I did not create that for myself. Doesn't matter what outfit I was wearing, how my hair looked, what I look like, nothing. Nothing called for that at all. I want you to know that like if you've gone through a situation and you feel like you um, did something and you are putting so much blame on yourself, let me tell you, let me be the first person to tell you, girl, you did not. Guy, bro, my friend, whoever, whoever you are, you had nothing to do with that. Nothing. No one, 
no one has the right to ever think that a they can follow you b they can do anything that they want to without your consent like you no, that's not that's not how that how life works people have to have consent to do anything to you whether that's being followed or anything else along any other lines i hope nobody goes through a situation like this or worse but if you have please tell someone because you went through it that means somebody else can go through it that means somebody else could possibly be in that situation i really wish i would have wrote down that gas station and called and been like hey you know or at least let the 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 the, the clerk at the gas station know like hey i was followed do you want to do something about these guys like at least call the police or something i really w i was so and i know i sound selfish i really do but i was actually i take that back i wasn't selfish i was living in that moment i was going through everything that i was going through and i was just so ready to be gone from there i wish now that i would have taken a second just to be like no we need to do something about this because this is not okay follow follow your gut man follow your gut and be careful be careful in the environments that you put yourself in be careful in the situations that you put yourself in I, I can't even I can't stress that enough I think I have enough stories not this one obviously this is like I said this is my first time being followed in a gas station in a creepy like off-road uh, situation it was dark it was it was a lot um but I do have situations where like my gut specifically told me not to go and I'm front and center, just right there, right in front of everything. And then when it all crashed and burned, I'm like, oh, what happened? We all, you know, go through life. And unfortunately, unfortunately, certain things get in our path that change us, that move us, that make us feel differently, that, you know, give us a different understanding of the world. Um, but I never, never thought that I would be in a situation like that. Again, like I, I've seen these things where people talk about how they got taken in, um, you know, in gas stations or at bus stops or at the airport. And they're like, you know, this girl got taken at the, and I'm like, how, how did that happen? Like who was watching, who was there, who was available? And I was one of them. I was somebody who could have been taken, thank God again for my wife, for my amazing wife, who is always there. Life, life is, listen, life be life in y'all. Life be, whew. But I really wanted to share that um, with you guys today and um, for everyone watching, for everyone listening, please, please, please take care of yourself. Make sure, like I said, like, watch your surroundings watch yourself as much as possible because those stories that you see online those stories that you see on the news you, those those stories where you're like ah how is that even possible mm, those stories are a little closer than you think those are like or you know like sometimes i'll be watching the news and i'm like oh what part of florida is that happening you know like i've never i haven't seen that in orlando yep well let me tell you something <laughs> It didn't happen in Orlando, but it damn sure happened in Atlanta. And that was scary enough. That was scary enough for me to be like, okay, this, this is, this is something that definitely as a, as a human being, you need to watch out because it's not just women because, um, I don't want to just limit it to just like, oh, if you're a woman, like be careful, this can happen to anyone, you know, kids, men, women, anyone, whoever you are, just please. That's all I ask for. Just be careful because anything and everything can happen and it's just it's a quick second you won't even pay attention you won't even notice it it's a quick fast and a hurry thing just watch yourself be careful thank you so much for listening i do apologize again if you're if you're listening or if you're watching i apologize for the for what's going on outside this is these are the days that i film and clearly um they need to do a i think it's a soccer watch party god knows anyways but with lots of love and so many hugs and just I, I wish we could we could all live in, in a little bubble where everyone's happy and, and just safe <laughs> but i hope you have an amazing day wherever you are and like i said with lots of love bye